Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out with John O'Carroll. We had a big night out in Sheffield on Saturday. Just tell us how much you know about Guillaume Fremois and what problems, if any, he can pose to you. Um, well, he's a very experienced operator, you know, so that's something you can't really buy in boxing. So for me, I need to stay on the top of my game. Um, he seems like a very, he does all the fundamentals correct. So he doesn't seem like he's going to come out, come out of blue or anything crazy that I haven't seen before, you know. Um, that type of fighter actually suits me better because it's the ones that are wild and a bit, bit crazy that you don't see the punches coming from. He does everything kind of quite correct. Um, and with my years of boxing and experience of boxing, you can kind of judge that from someone, what they're going to do and stuff like that. So I can, I can draw certain feints from him. And yeah, no, it's, he's the perfect fighter for me. I'm going to enjoy the night. And you're, this is obviously an IBF eliminator. You, are you at all disappointed that you haven't had that IBF shot already? There were so many rumours about you fighting Farmer. It ended up being James Tennyson, who you who you know about and everything. Yeah, yes, were, you, were you surprised that they picked him instead of you? Uh, no, not really. Do you know what? I don't really care. Boxing's all about ups and downs, and um, you, you get opportunities, and you just have to take them when they come. The, the, the word was spreading, and I was willing to take the opportunity you know but it never never happened so I didn't really I didn't bother I know I'm I mean number one shot for this you know so once I, once I win this fight on Saturday which I'm very confident on doing and um, he has to fight me so for me it was it, it didn't matter when the fight is going to happen as far as I'm concerned it's just keeping my belt warm really <laughs> what did you make of Farmer Tennyson did it show you anything you didn't already know no no, not at all, because um, Tennyson's a slow enough starter, you know, he always gets into a fight a little bit later on, and uh, Farmer started pretty fast. I was expecting that, to be honest, um, because he's a runner, you know, what I mean? he always starts fast, he's always good for four rounds, um, and then he starts to burn himself out, I think, a little bit after four rounds, so for me, no, I wasn't surprised one little bit. Um, it, it's just, it is what it is, Tennyson was a come forward fighter, and he was hoping to get him on a little bit of a later rounds and probably knock him out, and for me, um, Farmer, he's a slick mover, but he fades after four rounds and he has no heart. He's like the tin man, you know, all he wants is a heart. So for me, I think I'm going to break that heart and then I'm going to smash him up later on. Man, you can hit me in the body all day long. I do serious things for me, body work, to make sure my, my stomach's strong as anything. So he won't be hurting me with body shots and I'm tough as nails. So he's going to have to do a lot to, to get me out of there. He's not getting me out of there. If anything, I'm just going to give him a nightmare of a fight and uh, take his belt. With those big ambitions in mind, how important is it to you that you make a big statement on Saturday night as opposed to just getting the win? Listen, the win is a win no matter how, how much you win, how you do it. It doesn't really make any difference to me. I'm here to do a job and that, it's simple as that for me. I'm here to put food on the table for me baby. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to take care of business. And the more I keep winning, the more I get these big shots, the more money I get every single time. So for me, every, every fight is a world title because every, every fight I have, if I lose, my money goes down. If I, if I win, my money goes up. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm, I want to live my best life. You know, I'm not here for a long time. I want to get in and out of this boxing game as quick as possible. So for me, I just want to fight the best fighters out there, make as much money as quick as possible, and get out with my brain still intact. That's, that's my goal. You're sounding pretty sharp at the moment, I'll give you that. Um, wouldn't it be a John O'Carroll interview without asking about the beard at least once? <laughs> it's become such a part of your profile yeah, now, your crazy. public image. Do you think you'll ever shave it off? No, do you know what? I really like having a beard. And for me, it's like... All, it's some beard, though. It's not just a beard. <laughs> yeah, take. People are asking me, like, do you, do you do your beard on? And, and how do you get it to grow like that? Mate, I just let it grow. You know, there is no like, secret magic to it. And yeah, I get a few beard oils and stuff like that. But that's about it. That's just to keep it smelling fresh. But I think mean, there's a sponsorship opportunity there somewhere. You know? <laughs> there definitely is a sponsorship opportunity there because no beard oil has actually jumped on board yet. But um, it's, it's on your matter of time, 100%, mate. But um, no, it's just it's just one of them things. I hated shaving. I always hated shaving as a kid growing up and stuff. So for me, it just makes sense to grow a beard. You know, it's it's easy for me. It's easier for me to grow a beard than to shave. Plus, if I shaved now, people wouldn't even recognise me. So it's a trademark now. Well, I have to go, keep the beard it. Goes with you. Mate, I mean, boxer name is King Kong. If it was hairless, it'd be pointless, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you, John O'Carroll. Best of luck on Saturday night. We look thank forward you. to watching your workout. Thank you. Appreciate it.